Hi everyone, this is Mindy and welcome to my channel. In today, today's video, I have two cards I'm going to share with you. Now, I am mainly using this background hot foil plate from Simon Says Stamp, but I'm going to use the same products and give these two cards two totally different looks. So here is a look at some of the supplies I'll be using today, starting with this layered bunny, which is actually the whole reason I had started this card project. Then I have the intricate floral background hot foil plate, and my sentiment is going to come from the Hippity Hoppity stamp set. So I'm starting with that intricate floral background, and I'm going to line it up onto some hammer mill cardstock. Now I decided to experiment, and I have this bright pink glimmer hot foil, and I have a pastels collection. So I'm going to take that bright pink, I'm gonna start with that first, kind of line it up to figure out about how much I need to fill my entire background and then just trim that down with a pair of scissors. Now I'm going to take that so it's pretty side up on my hammer mill cardstock. I'm going to place my uh, hot foil plate pattern side down and I like to tape mine in place so it doesn't shift. Now I'm gonna just go ahead and trim out the pastel pink right away so I have that ready. Now I'm bringing in my Glimmer Hot Foil system. It's already been heating up. That green light is on, which tells me it's ready. I'm going to take my cardstock with that hot foil plate and flip it so that my hot foil plate is touching my Glimmer system. Then I'm gonna hit the timer button and that green light is going to blink. When it's ready, I'm gonna disengage that from the Glimmer system, place that on my Spellbinders Platinum 6, I have the two plates for the glimmer system that I'm going to place on top and then run that through my Platinum 6. I'm going to carefully peel back the tape and that hot foil plate. It is hot right away to the touch, so just be careful. And then I can peel back that bright pink glimmer foil. And it's hard to see on camera, but it is a beautiful, shiny, hot pink. Now, once my plate is dried, I'm going to repeat those same steps with the pastel. So it's pretty side of the foil facing up, my plate facing down, held in place with that best ever craft tape. I put it on my glimmer system and then ran it through my Platinum 6 machine. Now this one is going to be a very, very subtle look. It's a very soft color. These pastel glimmer foils are really great for your spring projects. If you don't want anything too bright and in your face, these pastels are going to be perfect. So since I have these on bigger sheets of cardstock, these were five and a half by eight and a half, I'm going to take a rectangle die from the Hero Arts Rectangles uh, Nesting Rectangles set, and I'm gonna trim out a panel from both sheets. Once those are both die cut, they're the same exact size, I'm gonna go through and do some ink blending. So normally I like to ink blend first and then foil on top, because I feel like sometimes my ink blending can dull my glimmer foil, but for some reason this time I foiled first and I'm coming in with bubble gum ink using a flat blending brush and I'm going to pretty much cover the entire panel, maybe getting a little softer handed towards the center. And I'm going to do the same thing on that pastel background. Then I'm going to come in with sweets ink with just a little bit darker. Once again, picking that ink up with my blending brush and then I'm gonna go around at the outer edges. So I'll be repeating both steps and both colors of ink on each background. So I'm kind of bringing that in towards the center, still leaving that light color there. And my last one is going to be a taffy ink. I think it's the darkest color out of this trio. And that's really going to bump up that dark pink. Now this darker color, I'm gonna go just around the very outer edges of each panel. Once I'm done, I'm going to take a paper towel and just buff over all of that glimmer foil because foil essentially does resist most of the ink. I think with some of these darker colors like red, it might be a little harder for it to resist. You could still definitely see a lot of shine on here. So that bright pink glimmer foil really stood out. The pastel is definitely more subtle. Now that both of my panels are done, I'm going to work on the layered bunny. And to be honest, this is actually the, was supposed to be the star of the show. I had created a card previously, decided to recreate it for a video. But as I had started creating 
um, using that intricate floral background, I had decided to play with those two different colors of glimmer foil. So although my bunny was supposed to be the star, it really ended up being just showing how two different colors of foil that are almost the same color uh, can have two completely different looks. So for the layered bunny, it is a one whole die piece that cuts out all of the pieces for the bunny. I die cut it from white, light pink, and black. Now for the white, I am just going around the edges of my bunny using a mini blending tool and some tumble glass distress oxide ink just to kind of give it some definition. And I'm using an oxide ink over a dye ink or even distress ink because oxides are, are have that kind of combination of pigment and dye ink. So it does have more of a chalkier look, kind of a softer look to it, which is what I wanted for my bunny. So I just went around the muzzle, the main headpiece, so I could get the ears, the feet, the belly, and these dyes are also leaving little impressions so that I know where all of my pieces are going to be glued to. Now here is where we get to layer everything. So I placed my belly on top, then I have my feet, and it's hard to see on camera, but there are little kind of imprints on the cardstock of where the feet are supposed to go. Now I'm taking a solid black piece and layering that behind this piece that has the eyes. We really want the black cardstock for the eyes. There's openings there, which is where I kind of paper pieced in pink for the ears. And then I have the muzzle. So you could make this white, brown, any color uh, kind of bunny that you would like. Then for the nose, I just brought in a pink Copic marker and colored that in and a white gel pen and added some dots for the eye. And then I could go ahead and attach my head. And this bunny is so super sweet. To finish off my backgrounds, I place them both in front of me. I'm taking some white paint. Any type of white paint will work. I'm going to put a little drop of water on my work surface. And then I'm going to kind of just scoop out some of that white paint and mix it just a little bit with the water. I want it mixed enough where I can flick it onto my background, but I don't want to water it down too much. I really want the white speckles to pop out. So I just took that and applied that little mixture to an acrylic block, and I'm going to use that to flick my white paint onto my backgrounds. Just be careful when the drips start going down your block. You don't want those bigger drops to hit your background. The sentiment I'm going to use is coming from the Hippity Hoppity stamp set. I want a heat emboss, so I'm using this cute new tool from Simon Says Stamp. It is an anti-static powder tool. So I just brushed that over the area of the cardstock that I'm going to stamp on. And then I'm going to ink up my sentiment with an embossing ink, which is a clear sticky ink. I'm going to gently stamp that down. And then I'm going to hold this over some scratch paper and just sprinkle on some gilded embossing powder, which is a beautiful gold embossing powder from Brutus Monroe. I'll tap off any excess. And then I'm going to heat that up with my heat tool. Now I decided I was going to try and do some double heat embossing, which will give it more shine and a little bit of dimension to it. So I placed that back into my mini Misty. I'm going to prep that once again really good with my anti-static powder tool and repeat those steps. So inking up the sentiment, stamping that down gently, sprinkling on that gilded embossing powder and then melting that. And this is definitely something, if you think heat embossing is magical, double heat embossing is double the magic. It is beautiful. Now, once this has cooled off, I'm going to line up the coordinating die. I love it when sentiments have coordinating dies. I'm going to hold it in place with some easy C tape and die cut that out. I'm also going to die cut it multiple times from that cardstock and layer that together to create dimension. I'm just using some connect glue that I have in a fine tip bottle. Now, for this card that I'm using the bunny for, I'm adding foam squares to the back of the bunny remove the backing of the foam squares and adding that kind of in the center. Now this is the pastel background. So I added the bunny to it and then added some liquid glue behind my sentiment to add that right underneath the bunny. Now to finish off the other card, I have the fancy happy Easter. So that I die cut from, it's like a champagne glitter cardstock. And I layered that together with about two or three more of the happy Easter from white cardstock. And I had die cut it out of, I also die cut out the shadow from like a pastel vellum. I thought that would be really pretty. It's kind of hard to see on that pink background. I, 
I honestly, if I would do this again, I would probably just leave off the shadow piece. But I went ahead, added that to the front of the card, and then just finishing off with some embellishments. These are some clear dew drops. And that finishes off my two cards that I have for you today. And I really like experimenting. Like I said, I don't, I typically use like a gold foil and to use this bright pink and then try that same background with a pastel. So same kind of background and techniques, but almost two totally different looks. I hope you enjoyed today's Easter inspiration. I will have all of the supplies listed down below in the video description and over on my blog as well. Thanks so much for joining and I'll see you again real soon.